Okay, what I want to talk about now is the concept of factor safety, or really, uh, maybe before I talk about factor safety, this notion of design. Okay? Now, when we did this problem, this is not really a design problem. Okay? Forces are given to you, they're all the geometry is given. So you go from there and determine the stress is given. Okay? That's sort of a forward process. Everything's no, go through do the analysis, and then that gives you the stress. And so it's a, you might call it an analysis type of problem. A lot of times as engineers, or actually arguably most of the times as engineers, we're designing the components, so we don't know the image. The question is, how big does this part have to be so it doesn't go? So this is now a design problem. So let's say you knew uh, all these geometries except Maybe you didn't know how thick that this plate needed to be. Like you didn't know this quarter inch, right? The other geometry is maybe you're fixed from some other you know, And the question is, how thick does this plate, plate have to be so that the part is not thick, okay? So that would be a design problem. So in that situation, you don't know the area, right? You can figure out the forces, but you don't know the area. So you don't know the thickness. That, that's what you need to find. Now, what about the stress? Well, this is where the notion of factors is. So, if you're doing a design problem, okay, you can determine the normal forces, you do not know the geometry of the design part, but we have to design it to meet some condition on the strength. So, we're saying that the geometry of the part has to be, you want to figure out the size of the part, in this case, the thickness of the plate, such that the stress doesn't exceed some acceptable value, some allowable value. Okay. Now, if you think about it, the obvious number you want to look at is what is the stress of which this material fails. Okay? So that value is what we refer to as the failure strength. So we want basically saying is the stress has to be less than some allowable stress. Okay? The stress has to actually be less than some allowable stress. So what we're trying to do is N over A has to be less than some allowable stress. So from this, we can then less than equal to. So the limiting case I think it's only just pause here and mention that. This is, a, this is an important thing to consider. It's always good to, to have in your head a feel of which way design should go. And I think this is pretty obvious and it's easy to do. But, but obviously, as the cross sectional area of this particular scenario gets bigger,
can use this to determine the area, or this particular way, like the way it poses the sun column. We know the area, we know this is three inches. Okay. Now, what is this allowable stress? One obvious thing would be the failure strength of the material. When does the material fail? You can actually test that with a, a, a sample of material in a pencil test specimen and figure out what stress the material fails. Uh, the problem with that is if we design the area to be that, then you're right at the point where it's going to fail. So for one reason or another, the operating force might go up more than what you think it does. It will fail. Or maybe you have some material with a flaw something else that actually makes the actual stress in which it fails a little lower than what you tested it at. Again, it fails. So you've designed this part with no margin. And that's not what we like to do. We like to have a little margin of safety. In engineering, we call that margin safety factor safety. So instead of using the failure strength, we use the allowable strength as equal to the failure strength divided by some number, some factor of safety, okay? So this factor of safety is greater than, uh, in some cases, it's equal to one. It's always got to be typically it's greater than one. Typical values are like 1.5, even upwards of much as much as four, okay? So this means Allowable stress is less than the failure stress. You're actually designed to a lower allowable stress than the failure stress. So that, that is the margin you have the difference between allowable stress and the actual failure stress. Nobody can like it. Failure stress is allowable. Oops, I'm sorry. Failure. But the way it's used more often is Obviously, sometimes what students will forget is the allowable here is the failure. Uh, you can memorize the equation. I think it's kind of silly. I think this is one of those great examples where it's not an equation you want to memorize, but it's a concept. Failure, the factor of safety. greater than one, it's how much margin you basically have. So if the factor of safety is greater than one, then the allowable stress you know, obviously has to be less than the failure stress. So that tells you that failure stress is defined by the factor of safety is allowable. Not something else like the failure stress is defined, sorry, but the factor of safety times the failure stress. So that way the allowable stress would be greater than the failure stress. And obviously that makes no sense. The negative one. That's the notion of factor safety. So let's go back and we're going to do this problem and just do a real quick example. This factors, these, these concepts are kind of subtle. Well, not subtle, but they're, they're simple, but they're also very important. And I think it does bear some time. Again, this is one of those cases I want to pause. Don't just memorize this equation. Don't just memorize divide by a failure by factor safety that's allowable for this equation. Think about the concept that's going on. What factor safety is? It's not that hard. We're not talking about uh, quantum mechanics, but uh, you know this notion of developing a design sensor, engineering intuition, is really a strong skill. Right? Everybody shows the trying to develop this. Better in here. Right, so let's do this as an example. Let's look at this case. Let's say we don't know what this thing is. Let's find it. Right, we have to design the appropriate thickness. And let's say that we're using material, some sort of plastic material, where the normal failure stress is, is 300 psi. We 
you want to factor safety in this case, uh, you, you have to be able to serve. Okay? So if the failure strength is 300 PSI, factor safety is 3. That means we have to design this to an allowable stress of only 100 PSI. Right? The failure stress is divided by the factor safety. This is what we're designing. Another way to see think of it is we're, we're considering a lot of the you're asking last time. Excuse me. All right, so that's the stress we're designing to. We have this, it's the same geometry up here. So the normal force is still 100 pounds, or minus 100 pounds. All right. So. Now, most materials, unless it's stated otherwise, but you have a failure strength. Let's assume this is the same with compression and tension. And sometimes we get different compression strengths. All right. So we need to figure this out to some extent. Normal force over the cross sectional area. Our design for you. We point A. We know that A in this particular case is going to be thickness times three inches. Right? That is that cross section. Okay. Um, now, let's just talk about the size. So obviously, if I put the negative here, this becomes a so you, you really want to look at this. I think this is kind of obvious. I don't want to get too much in the half dollar. Right? That's the case of the value. But he goes to the value. He said, if you didn't, if you didn't, without considering the actual value, then you could keep increasing the compressional load to infinity. You're always going to be less than negative value. Right? So it's really the actual value. Okay. Um, all right, so let's find the area. In the limited case, the area has to be greater than or equal to uh, this force, 100 pounds, divided by the allowable stress, which is 100 pounds per square inch. The pounds cancel out. Section area. So the area has to be greater than or equal to one inch squared. Two inches, three inches, whatever. But the limiting case is the area one inch squared. Right? Now, if that's the situation, Greater, but as soon as you drop that thickness lower than 0.3, the stress will go off and exceed the allowable value. Right? Sometimes we're going to do design problems where the dimension gets smaller and the stress goes down. Okay? So it's not always that the more conservative estimate is when the value goes up. Okay? Now, another way you'll sometimes see this problem written is, you know, plate thicknesses might come in standard socks, stock sizes. So maybe the thicknesses come in 16th of an inch increments. So that means it comes in 1 16th is 1 8 
five inches, right? And the next one is going to be two sixteenths, which is eight. problem might be find the thickness of a plate to the nearest sixteenth of an inch that will give you a factor of six. Now in that situation uh, one third is somewhere in between on the high side, what below that? Five sixteenths. Right? And this would be five sixteenths, which would be two five. Right? So in this situation falls between five eight five. Three eighths thick. Which one should you use? Well, obviously, you go to the thinner one, even though that actually is closer. The factor of safety is now less than three. So you need to always, when you have these situations where you say find the nearest 16 or whatever, you have to go as a designer to the more conservative value. In that situation, Actually, three eighths. Right? So you want to use three eighths plate, right? And that will give you a factor of safety greater than three. Right? Even though point three 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 is closer to five sixteenths, right? if you have a round it, you go to five sixteenths. Five sixteenths give you a stress that's less. I mean, give you a factor of safety less than three. Right? So therefore, it would not be this right? You have to go to the more conservative. Sometimes that'll mean the dimension actually is smaller, like maybe it's a hole. Uh, more conservative value might be a smaller dimension. Sometimes it might be a bigger dimension. But uh, you know, we can kind of figure that out, right? When we're talking about finding the you know, to the nearest quarter inch, whatever, we always want to go in the direction that makes it more conservative. Okay? All right. That's all I want to say about that. Okay? Uh, one of these things we'll try to 